So, this is you. But, you want this to be you. Well, there is a method for that. Meet Jay. Jay is broke. He does have a decent job with a pretty good paycheck, but he always seems to run out of money right before payday. Does that sound familiar? Well, there are two possible reasons for Jay's money problems. Number one, either he has an income problem, meaning he isn't earning enough money to cover even his basic living expenses. Or number two, a lifestyle or money management problem meaning he does earn enough money to have a balanced budget, but he's just misappropriating his funds. Now, sure, there are some unforeseen financial emergencies, things like losing your job or a major illness that could lead to financial troubles. But in this video, we're gonna talk about the things that are within your control. Step one, the discovery phase. Now to complete this step, you'll need to gather some information. Pull together your last three bank statements. And if you have multiple accounts, make sure you get statements for all of them. If you have credit cards, go ahead and download those statements too. And if you have any expenses that will not show on either of these statements, go ahead and pull those together too. For example, anything that you might pay for in cash or things that are drafted from your paycheck. And now that you have all of your expenses down in one place, take the time to look at each of them individually and let's separate them into one of two categories, necessity and non-necessity. Now you're an adult. I know you understand the difference between the two. But sometimes the line can get really blurry between them. I mean, eating is a necessity. Eating out for every meal, not so much. Also, trips to the grocery store. It would be really easy just to throw all of those Whole Foods expenses into the necessity category. But you and I both know there are a lot of non-necessity items on those receipts. And guys, the only way this step works is if you're honest with yourself. You know the difference between necessity and non-necessity. Nobody else is going to see this. Nobody is checking your homework. This is all for you. So don't go easy on yourself. If it's not a necessity, put it in the non-necessity category. And after this step, you will know exactly where your money is going. Now, if a balanced budget is really all you care about, you can pretty much do it from right here. You know what you're spending. You know what you're earning. Balance your budget. But now if you're looking for more than a balanced budget, if you're looking to really grow your net worth, there are a few additional steps. Now, once you've added up your necessity spending, you know that that is the minimum amount of money that you have to earn every month in order to live a basic existence. And every penny that you earn over the necessity amount, that's the money we have to work with. That is the money that we have to use to grow your future. Now, if you earn less than your necessity spending, you've got some work to do. You need to work on increasing your income now. And if you earn more than your necessity spending, you don't have an income problem. And if that's the case, we need to look at your non-necessity spending and see where we can cut so that we can find money that you can use to invest in your future. And after this step, if you decide you want more out of life than just a balanced budget, then let's jump into step two setting your goals. Imagine taking a road trip to somewhere you've never been before and not having your phone or a map with you. You may know exactly where you want to go, but at some point, you're not gonna have any idea which road to take. Not to mention, there would definitely be things along the way that you would like to stop and see and experience. But if you haven't done your homework and you don't know what exit to take to find those things, you'll miss them. And unfortunately, most of us will take time to plan a road trip, but when it comes to life, we just take it as it comes with no clear direction. And that just makes no sense because your 70 plus years on this earth is so much more important than one road trip. I guess what I'm trying to hammer home is setting goals for life, it's really important and for more than just financial reasons. After all, I mean, using our road trip analogy, if one of your lifelong dreams could be realized simply by taking the next exit off the interstate, wouldn't you like to know that it was there before you pass it? Yeah, you would. It really is that simple. Just make a plan. All right, life goals should be organized into three categories, short-term, mid-term, and long-term. We're all different. We all want different things out of life. 
your plan needs to be all about the things that matter to you. Let your imagination take the lead. Don't limit yourself, but be mostly practical about it. So let's start with short-term goals. These are goals that can be accomplished in like a year or less. This would be things like reducing your credit card debt every month, a checking account balance that grows month over month, open a retirement account and begin funding it, no matter how small the contributions. Maybe increase your income by 10%. Now you can set as many or as few goals as you want. Those were just some examples off the top of my head. Also keep in mind that some of these goals will need to be stair steps to your mid and long-term goals. For example, if one of your midterm goals is to buy a car with cash, then one of your short-term goals needs to have a savings aspect to get you on the path for that. And speaking of midterm goals, these are goals that will take a little bit longer to accomplish. Think two to 10 years. This might be things like pay your credit card balance in full every month, have three or more sources of income. For reference, millionaires have on average seven income sources. Reach a $100,000 net worth. Purchase a duplex with 20% down. Oh, and live in one side and rent the other to pay the mortgage. Free house. And finally, what I think is probably the most important midterm goal is to begin allocating at least 20% of your income to future earnings through investing. And now for long-term goals, think 10 years or more. And I know for some of you, 10 years seems like a lifetime away. I promise you it's not. The older you get, the faster time flies. 10 years is like that. So for your long-term goals, maybe it's something like completely debt-free of consumer debt. I say consumer debt because there are times when borrowing money to make more money is a valid thing. So debt-free of consumer debt. Maybe build the home of your dreams by the time you're 40. Maybe a net worth of, say, 5 million or more by the time you're 45. Maybe even starting a YouTube channel where you can help others by sharing what you've learned over the last 10 or 15 years. Oh, and making a decent side income off said channel. Okay, so once you have all those goals laid out, it's time to move on to step three, crafting your plan. So steps one and two were all about getting organized and figuring out what you want financially out of life. Step three is all about building that roadmap that we talked about to accomplish it. Everyone's plan and outcome will be different. There are so many moving parts, and we all have different talents, abilities, access to resources, and even social connections. Hey, remember our buddy Jay? Well, he went through the discovery and the goal setting phases too. So let's take a look at one of his short term goals and his roadmap to reach it. Jay's first short term goal was to begin saving $500 a month. Jay has a healthy income of $5,000 a month, bring home. Problem is, Jay is spending $5,700 a month. How in the world is Jay going to allocate $500 a month to his future growth when he's running a $700 deficit every month? In order to set aside $500, Jay will have to cut his spending from $5,700 a month all the way down to $4,500 a month. That's a $1,200 monthly reduction in spending. That's a lot. Or Jay can keep spending what he's spending. He just has to increase his income to $6,200 a month. Or better yet, he could take a mix of the two and he could reduce his spending and increase his income. So in phase one, when Jay reviewed all of his expenses, here's what he found. $725 a month on morning coffee, lunch, eating out, and getting drinks with friends. $115 a month for a gym membership he's using once a week. $120 a month on things like Netflix and Hulu, YouTube Premium, and other apps that he has subscribed to and never canceled. $200 on random shopping. $275 a month on other entertainment, things like sporting events, concerts, movie tickets. That's $1,435 that he could cut from his budget should he choose to. 
And now Jay realizes that he has a money management problem or a lifestyle problem, not an income problem. He does have the income to cover his basic living expenses, but he has made the choice to spend $700 a month more than he brings in. And that's putting him further and further in debt every month. So first things first, he needs to figure out how to stop the bleeding and live within the current means that he has, while also actively working to increase his income to fund his future goals. Now, what if Jay had not been able to cut $1,200 a month out of his budget? Should he just throw up his hands in defeat and give up? No. He'll need to at least figure out how to stop digging the debt hole deeper and then work his way to a balanced budget over time. At that point, increasing his income would become a necessity. Now, looking at one other short-term goal that Jay set, he wants to stop using his credit cards for non-emergency spending, which is not a bad idea. And if Jay doesn't have the discipline to stop on his own, he'll need to take a couple of steps to help himself. He could start by deleting his credit card information from sites like Amazon, making it just a little bit more difficult to make that purchase or stop carrying credit cards in his wallet. Maybe even take an extreme method like storing a card in a way that you can't get to it. I've actually heard of people freezing their credit cards in a block of ice so that it has to be thawed before they can use it. And you can't put it in the microwave to thaw it because it'll ruin the card. So you actually, I guess you could put it under water, but it still takes a while. And hopefully through the process of thawing it, maybe you come to your senses and change your mind on that purchase. Or worst case scenario, cancel the cards. That does have a negative impact on your credit score, so it really should be a last resort. But dropping your credit score just a little is a much better option than continually running up credit card debt, especially now as interest rates are increasing. In fact, side note for you guys. In my early 20s, I got my family into a terrible financial situation. I wasn't able to pay our house note for like nine months and we were almost foreclosed on. I was able to negotiate our way out of it and to keep the house, but we were almost foreclosed on. I wasn't able to pay our credit card. Visa sued us and my wife was pregnant with our first child. And while she was in the shower, washing her hair, soaked up, lathered up, our water was disconnected in the middle of her shower. That was an absolute low point for my family. But as terrible as that situation was, something good did come from it. It completely destroyed mine and my wife's credit score. And we were forced to live on cash for the next like seven to 10 years. Now, the unfortunate thing for us was the lost time in investing. The blessing was we learned how to live off cash. If we didn't have cash, we didn't buy it. That whole situation, that was the punch in the face that I needed to get my financial life in shape. Okay, now back to Jay. But I think you get the point. Jay and you will have to walk through all of your goals and make sure that you're crafting a realistic plan to hit them. Now, once you have your plan in place, you'll know exactly what resources that you need to make it all happen. And remember, Cutting expenses is not the only way to solve a financial deficit. You'll also need to look at ways to increase your income. So in step one, Jay learned where his money was going. In step two, he defined his goals. And in step three, he developed a plan to hit them. In step four, he has to implement the plan. It's time to get work done. You have a plan, follow it. This is by far the most difficult step. You'll have to dig deep and find willpower and discipline. And like I've already said, you have three choices to hit your goals. Budget and spend less, increase your income, or both, budgeting and increasing your income. That's the best option. And one word of caution, to be successful in all of this, you cannot constantly deny yourself the things that you want. After all, that would be a miserable life. And if I had to guess, you did not put have a miserable life in your life goals. If you want a life that's more expensive than your current earning level, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's up to you to go out and figure out how to earn more money though. 
Money is not scarce. It's all around you. There is more than enough in circulation for you to get what you need and plenty more. And after these steps, you'll have all of the information that you need to craft your plan and follow through with it. Step five, track, reassess, and optimize. Life is long. You will change as a person. And your goals and desires, those are going to change too. And as you're making your way through life, you should be continually checking your pulse to make sure that you're still on the right path. As your life's goals and desires change, simply update your plan to make sure that you're still on a path to hit those things. It really is that simple. Now, life is a bit like a roller coaster. Sometimes things are smooth and headed up, and then sometimes the bottom will fall out from under you. And that's terrifying. But as long as you stay on the track, you will get to your final destination. Guys, the best way to increase your net worth is with passive income. And this video right here can help you with that. Guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.